This is KGW News at Sunrise. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for waking up with us to start your Sunday. I'm Brittany Falkers. And topping headlines this morning, we're hearing from Oregon's public records advocate days after she resigned, citing pressure from the governor's office. Why she says she was put in an unethical position. Plus, a rally in Newport for a transgender woman attacked after using the woman's bathroom. The message church leaders want to send about hate. But let's start your Sunday off with a check on the forecast because Keely, it was pretty nice yesterday. Yeah, it was a beautiful day. We had sunshine. Temperatures made it up uh, to right around 77 here in the metro area. But things are changing. In fact, we are in store for a cool and wet day out there. We're 61 right now. We got the rain just started falling here in the metro area. It has been falling out on the coast and it's going to continue to fall as we head throughout the day today. So here's a look at your weather headlines. Yes, a very rainy day. We are going to see some heavier rain this afternoon. The system's going to intensify in some areas. Some models show south of the Portland area in the Salem area. We will certainly see heavier rain this afternoon, which means we could see some minor street flooding as well. We're talking rainfall amounts a half to an inch and a quarter. Yes, it is feeling more like October, not like the last week of summer. We'll talk more about the rain and how long it will last coming up. Brittany. All right, thanks so much, Keely. Well, new this morning, Hillsborough police say a suspect suffered only minor injuries in an officer involved shooting at a local motel. There are not a lot of details this morning, but we do know officers went to the extended stay America on Northeast Eider Court to investigate what they call suspicious circumstances. That led them to one of the rooms and an altercation of some sort with at least one person. An officer did fire their gun, but again, we're told the suspects injuries are minor. But I was told that I wasn't supposed to tell anyone. And it also made me feel like I was put in an unethical position. That's what Oregon's public records advocate is saying about her decision to resign after 18 months on the job. Ginger McCall says the governor's office wanted her to work for Kate Brown's interests instead of the public interests. Friday, McCall met with the Public Records Advisory Council about making the position more independent. KGW's Art Edwards talked to McCall about that and her decision to resign. When Ginger McCall left her job as an attorney with the Department of Labor to come to Oregon as the public records advocate, she was excited. She thought that she was setting up an independent office that would help improve transparency in the state. Um, unfortunately, in a series of meetings that I had with the staff of the governor's office, um, I was informed that in fact they were my supervisors, um, that it was my job to represent the governor's interests on the Public Records Advisory Council, but I was told that I wasn't supposed to tell anyone. That got her thinking about the job. It felt like it was an affront to the transparency mission of the office, and it also made me feel like I was put in an unethical position. She says it was a position she couldn't abide and submitted her resignation. Governor Brown has since said that she was surprised to hear the pressure from staff and issued a statement that said in part, they were conflicted between the goals of serving the governor and promoting the cause of transparency. McCall has met with the governor in what she called a brief but friendly meeting. Did she try, try to get you to stay? No. Did you think she might? I mean, I guess it would have felt nice, but I wasn't, I, I had no idea what would happen in that meeting. For McCall, leaving the job was difficult and disappointing. I mean, I moved here from across the country. It, I picked up my life and I came here because I believe in this job, because I believe in this office, because I believe in its mission. And it was really disappointing to have it turn out this way. Art Edwards reporting for us there. Now McCall will stay on the job until October 11th, then will return to Washington, D.C. for a new job. She tells us she has left a memo for her successor so they would know broadly about the challenges of the office. Church leaders are coming out to support a transgender woman who was attacked on the Oregon coast. Court records say Lauren Jackson came out of a women's bathroom last month at Agate Beach in Newport when a man named Fred Costanza confronted her. Witnesses say he hit her more than 10 times, fracturing her skull and jaw. He's facing bias crime charges. Yesterday, Jackson was at the rally but and put on, it was put on by Lincoln County Clergy United against hate. And I am healing, and I'm just honestly so grateful to everyone for being so kind. And, and I hope that you show that kindness to not only everybody else and all the other categories, but also show it to yourself. 
The group says they wanted to send the message that hate has no place in their community. Highway 214 is back open near Woodburn after a deadly crash last night. It happened at around 6 o'clock and shut down the highway near Elliott Prairie Road. Police say the crash involved a motorcycle. We're told the road closure impacted traffic going to and from Oktoberfest in Mount Angel. Police are investigating a second deadly motorcycle crash in Clark County outside of Vancouver. This one happened around 730 at the intersection of State Route 500 and 65th Street. The head on crash between the motorcycle and a car blocked all lanes and drivers were being turned around at 182nd. Volunteers spent their Saturday picking up trash in and along the Sandy River, and they did it while riding on rafts and inner tubes. Pretty creative way, right? Crews started at Lewis and Clark State Park in Troutdale and floated down the river, stopping to pick up trash that they saw. Oh, I got it. 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 Yay! The best thing that we can do for the health of the rivers, for the health of the fish and the algae and the entire food chain of the ocean, not to mention ourselves, is to keep that trash out of the waterways and to collect it and to keep it out when we can in these events. Can't even imagine all the things that they found. And this cleanup uh, happens every year, and it's put on by the Sandy River Watershed Council and the nonprofit group Cleans Rivers and Streams. They usually do it at the end of the summer when the river is lower. And hey, it was a pretty comfortable day out there for the river cleanup, but we've seen quite a few gray mild days this summer. We still have more than a week left of the season, but a lot of people are wondering where was summer in the first place? It got a lot of you talking online, so I just had to ask people around Portland, did Mother Nature shortchange us on summer? Could have used some hot days, even though I don't like heat waves. It's great weather. <laughs> we should not complain at all. <laughs> In a city known for gray skies and misty days, a dry and hot summer is a welcome break. We got the uh, tradition of uh, it's going to rain every day. And with people coming into Portland from all over the world, opinions often depend on where you're from. I think it was too hot. At least coming from Alaska, because I am coming from Europe, uh, the, the summer is much nicer, I must say. But with seldom hot streaks and plenty of rain, this summer may have been a letdown compared to the weather we've come to expect. It was comfortable, it just wasn't your typical Oregon hot summer. Saturday market vendor Michael Manahan has lived in the area for about two decades and noticed the lack of heat. He says his evidence is edible. Uh, I absolutely think we needed more hot days because our tomatoes did horribly. So that was the telltale sign. For many natives or longtime Oregonians like Ed English, this summer was a storybook character's dream. Not too hot, not too cold. It was just right. It was perfect. You couldn't ask for better. What do they call that, the Goldilocks summer? That's what we had. But with autumn creeping around the corner, what does he think of September so far? September, do you remember? That saxophone for a little wet, but not bad.